Hello and welcome back to RC Workshop. Guys, today, check it out. We are building the Sakura D5S from 3 Racing. Um, rear wheel drive drift car. It's going to be a quick build video, to be honest. Um, my lad is actually going to be building this car as his first rear wheel drive drift car. Um, we're not going too expensive. We're putting cheap electrics in there, cheap receiver, cheap, um, cheap transmitter as well. Um, I'm going to be building the diff and the shocks for him because he wants to move this thing along and get on the track real quick. Um, so yeah, we'll record a bit of footage as we go along building the items for the car until it's complete and show you when it's all finished. Let's go. As I say guys, so first things first for me is obviously the diff. So I know I hope to build the diff and I was involved in it. So I'll turn the page and leave the lad to build the arms, some of the chassis plate. Uh, the steering links, the rear arms, what else has he got to do? Let's have a look. And then drop the back diff in and the gearbox, which we'll do together. Uh, top piece going on, more little additional bits. And then electrics and servos. I have heard that you have got to have a small servo for this build. So, not happy about that because we have purchased a big size sub box for the build. Anyway, let's crack on. Let's see how much you can get built on the video. Yay! So we got most of this diff build built as per the instructions. Literally just ready to drop it all together. Got some 5,000 weight diff fluid that came with the car, which we're going to use. We're just going to go do the complete setup as per the manual. So, and this is all your internal diff. I'm going to drop that in, like so. Pop it in just there. Make sure that clicks into the gears inside. Push it down, and there's already a certain amount of oil in there, as you can see. What you're going to do is top that up a little bit more. And put it behind the gears as well, guys, don't forget. Top that up a little bit. Like so, not to the brim just yet, and we're going to turn it slowly, slowly. And get all those air bubbles out. You might have to get your finger in there and push them gears down just to get all the air bubbles up from under underneath. It's a bit of a messy job, so you might need a paper towel for this one. And again, top that back up like so. Then you're gonna leave that on the stand for five minutes for all the bubbles to come out. Give it another turn. Then we're gonna drop this on. Over the top, like so. Where's the top cover? Top cover on, which is already done. Grease behind as well. Drop that on, put the screws in, and you've got a complete diff. Whilst Reese is doing this. So Reese is on part two, which is front and rear suspension arm assembly. So what he's about, he's got all of it sorted now. He's about to knock all them screws into the arms and get them arms complete. Check it out. So the actually, the arms are really smart. With that fiberglass upper deck and fiberglass lower, that is really tidy, guys. I really like that. They look smart. Mm -mm. And the diff's done as well. Nice and smooth. Nice, got the bearings on there as well. Ready to drop in the car. I've got slightly greasy fingers, but them are nice. Oh, it already feels like we're getting somewhere. So we've got the chassis plate, we've got the front arms on, we've got the rears on, left and right, both sides. We are moving on to front and rear bulkhead installation now, guys. And then we'll be dropping that diff over here. Oh, looking good. Here we go then. So I'm about to drop all these shocks together. They're all identical, so I'll be doing all four in one go, which is nice. And my lad is on just the uh, front and rear bulkhead installation. He's just got all the parts he needs, figuring out how to put an RC kit together. Should fly together after these bulkheads are done, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Right then, so here we are, just filling the shocks up with the 200 weight oil that came with them. So I literally just fill the shock up. 
not to the brim just yet like so and what you're going to want to do is let these rest take your time with these so get a shock holder or make one out of a bit of cardboard if you can then what you're going to want to do is you've filled that up now but there's a piston in there the likelihood is there's some air trapped under that piston so if you pump the piston up and down but not to the top there's the air look and just keep doing that and then let it settle again and move to the next one again not to the top see the above balls come up from underneath the piston you don't want no bubbles or air inside your shocks and just keep doing that but don't bring that piston to the top of the oil if you know what I mean what you can always do as well is once you have done that you can always just top them up again a tiny bit like so this one hasn't obviously been pumped yet so there you go, there's the air bubble from underneath that. That's a really good example. And just let them rest. Keep doing that two or three, four times, it's fine. And then what you're going to want to do is drop these rubber grommets over the top of the shock. But what you don't do is slap it downwards. You actually put it on from the side so that you get a nice seal on that shock. And then what else you're going to want to test is that your shock in the top has also got some airflow, which this one has. There's a tiny little hole that goes through that shock top. You want to make sure that's got a little bit of airflow so that the the, uh, the rubber and the shock can flex within there. I'll get these all put together and come back to you in a bit. So yes guys, shocks are built and feeling very, very plush and nice. All four are done. Fantastico. And my lad has built the front steering assembly and it's all nice and smooth. Look at that, that's nice. Um, then we're gonna drop that on the front. Just gonna drop that last little screw then in the front bulkhead there. And the steering assembly. Woo, check that out. That is really nice. Sorry, I was out of view there. Check that out. Fantastic. It ain't even fantastic plastic, it's fantastic fiberglass. That is cool. We're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere. Just waiting for my lad now to finish up with this rear bulkhead and gearbox. Ooh, drop that in. Right then guys, so we are on the back end, so we're on the differential. Differential just drops into the gearbox like so. Nice. Then what you've got is your bevel gear. Your bevel gear, the one with the set screw, is the one that faces out towards the back of the car. So you, this will literally drop in like so. There's one with the one with the bevel set a set screw lock, and one without. The one with the set screw is the one that faces out. Also, I'm led to believe by the manual. So you'll get that squashed into place, and drop the four screws to this side, to that side, in on that. Ooh. So there we have the back part of the gearbox done. That's the interesting part, guys, like I say. How long will this gearing last? We don't know, but it definitely looks beefy and chunky, and I think it should last, to be honest. Unless you've set it up wrong, I think that should last. It's chunky. That's just, Some of them gears are as chunky as 1 8 scale gears. I like it. So that is the rear gearbox done. It's a little bit technical guys because what it sort of tells you to do is build all this rod. You build it all and then you gotta take it back apart to get it through these two mounting points here. Um, if there's a weak point on it, it is actually these mounting points where these bearings are. But I mean drifting isn't really an aggressive sport so no one's gonna hit into the back end that hard. But apart from that, this is nice and smooth. Look at that. Ooh, real, real nice. I'm really impressed. It, it looks mean as well. Imagine that with the motor sitting under as well, but turning at some serious RPM. Well, guys, I think I'm going to wrap that up for today. I'm going to do is my daylight's fading outside, and I've got a pizza on the way. So I'm going to wrap this up for today. We are on bag number three, I think it is. No, that's just been done. We are on bag number three and four. 
Next is steering and servo. And a steering and servo and the rear shock assembly, which is nice and easy. This thing's gonna to fly together tomorrow. So I'll see you tomorrow. Yes, so we are back day two and feeling fresh and ready for it. So we're gonna finish this build today. We have just moved on to steering assembly and the top deck. As you will see though, guys, I've been a little bit naughty. I refuse because I've bought that nice new Savox servo for this car. I refuse to not use it. Measurements for the bottom are fine. It clears the chassis and everything else. Measurements for the top, not so. You do need one of them cost less cost effective small servos, especially when you've already just bought one. These little stands go lower, like so. And normally this piece would go above your servo and hold the suspension. What I'm gonna try, and if it fails, then so be it. I'll just I'll I'll come to it and buy a small servo, but I'm going to try building some slightly bigger towers to hold the steering, uh, the suspension mount and see if it works. And if it works well, I'm going to leave it like you. So all we've got to do then is just create some smaller poles or holders or what have you for this little piece of fiberglass that then holds the suspension. It is obviously gonna change the geometry ever so slightly. It's literally, there's five millimeters in it, guys, if you wanna put your normal standard servo on there. They obviously have done it with a smaller servo for a reason, but I'm being cheap, so there. Let me get that done, and I'll get back to you in a sec. Just a quick update then. So this is what we're gonna make it out of. This is actually a link from a crawler. You know, the links in between the axles. That's all it is. And you've got actually this nice extra little piece on there, either side. So what I'm going to do is cut there and there like so. And I'll have two little pieces for either side. Let's see how it goes on. So here we have the large servo barge. Check it out. It is on there. I'll show you in comparison. So them are the ones you bodged on there. And look, this is completely reversible, guys. If this don't work, like I say, I'll just have to buy a small one. But if it works and the setup's correctly and it drifts nicely, then fine, we'll leave it on there. So there's the tall ones. Put that next to the original that was on there. And there you go, that's the difference in height. But we've got that on there and, woo, hello. It all works. Let's just see, once we've built the front of the car, how stretched these suspension are by going up that extra few mil. If not, like I say, boom, bang on, two thumbs up. Let's go. There we have it then. The back of the gearbox is complete. The top's new on with the shock mount as well. So that's all solid. There is a little bit of play in that rear diff though, back and forth. So that might need shimming at some point. But there's only a little bit of play, mind. But that's all nice and fresh. Then the front as well. Again, obviously all done knocking nice. So the next part we are is number six, bag five, bag two, bag three, front upper arm insulation and then number seven is front and rear knuckle assembly and then hopefully after that let's see let's jump the gun let's see is it shock insulation yet no it's drive shaft insulation then shock build which we've already done and then shock insulation to see if they actually fit yep let's carry on i am absolutely impressed check this out Real, real nice components. Well done. Secura D5, 44mm on that shaft. Really, really nice. Kept in the oil bag as well, so there's no rust going on. All that's already put together for you as well. Put one on already on the back. My lad is just finishing off all the front assembly now. There's some really, really nice components on this. I'm really impressed. Let's drop these other drive shafts in, then I'll get back to you in a bit. Oh, she's looking like a drift car right now. So you got the back end done, upper and lower arms, drive shafts are in, everything's nice and tight, left and right. Got the front done as well. Oh yeah, check it out, got the knuckles on. Yeah, so what is next? I think, is it shock application, Reese? Um, yeah, front shock application. Yeah. Let's get these bad boys on, see if the little modification works. Whoop, whoop. 
<laughs> I think that modification for the large servo was a success. There's still clearance in there for them shocks and check it out. The shocks work really, really well. My fingers are kidding now though from snapping all these ball joints on all over the place. And look, ah, my skin. Anyway, it was worth it because look at that. It's a piece of art. That looks absolutely fantastic. The servo mod seems to be working. It'll all come out to see what it's like on the track ultimately, but I think that fits pretty well for now, guys. Happy with that. Let's just get the last few bits done. Whoop, whoop. So we have run out of daylight. Once again, the light comes through. The conservatory window behind me helps light up the dining room for the video. But guys, you know what? That is complete. Minus the front bumper and the electrics and everything else going in. Finishing touches. That is done. So let's go and put it on the spinny stand in the bright kitchen for the cinematics. Woo! And there you have it. Wow. Let me just tell you. This was a fantastic kit to build. I mean, even if you didn't race it on the track, it was a great build for under £100. And look at that front end. And the back end. And the front end. <laughs> let's have a look in closer, up close and personal with this. Wow, look at the gearing on that rear end. How cool is that? And you know what? It's as smooth as butter. They are chunky back gears as well. I know they're open to the elements, but they are chunky. There is one eight scale buggies out there racing on dirt tracks with less chunkier gears than that. So that's all nice and then to the front end. Look at this. We've got them, them suspension just sitting over a large servo as well. Not sure how that's going to interrupt a body shell. Never, we'll get to that part when it comes again. We've got away with it so far. The steering all works as it should, like so. And this is the lock you get on the steering, by the way, guys. Let's get above there. So your leading wheel is all the way to the side. And the same for the other way around as well. Obviously, the servo's got to be set up and be pushing it and everything else. And we've got to get them front bumpers on, but I just wanted to show you without them bumpers on. Look at that there. Wow, it looks absolutely mean. I am dead impressed with this kit. Let's say the suspension as well. They work really nice. Cantilever suspension. They are just clearing that servo ever so slightly under there. So it's, let's say, just enough to get yourself a servo on there. What you could also do is there's a little bit of room underneath that servo arm you could obviously drop another millimeter in there or so if you wanted to but i'll tell you what i think that's great for now i will have to let you know how that servo mod works or not though so there you have it guys fantastic build really enjoyed building it with my lad as well this is his first build uh he did the majority of the work i've got to give it to him uh, this thing looks absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to just finishing it off, dropping a body on it, dropping the electrics in and getting this thing on the track, which obviously there will be a video of. Anyway, if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up, uh, share it, comment and subscribe. Much appreciated guys and I'll see you on the next one. Ooh yeah!